Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me from a cute V of the bi weekly contest 99. Count ways to count, uh, group overlapping ranges. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. Uh, first of all, remember the mod. Don't, don't forget the mod. Um, this one I, I actually was a little bit sad about in the contest, um, just because uh, this is just a little bit of a pre postmortem or whatever. Uh, retro. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was very really disappointed with this one on myself, just because I had so many typos. I knew how to do this one immediately, but um, but I used the wrong variable name for whatever reason. Um, and it's a thing that I've done many times. Um, so there are many ways to do the. So there there are two components, right? One is that um, noticing that if two ranges overlap, they have to be in the same group. So there's no choice, no decision here, right? So then the first thing you have to do um, is to group all of them together. Um, and then once you put all the overlapping ranges together, um, you could do it with Union Fine, you could do it with uh, whatever. There are a couple of things you can do. I'll show you mine in a, in a minute. But um, once you do that, then for every range, actually it's not that bad. It, it can be either in the first group or in the second group. And... Well, if you have X different groups, then you have X degree, uh, two to the X de degree of freedom, each of them having, you know, two choices. So just two to the X um, <clears throat> under the mod, of course. But that for X is equal to number of groups. And now there are a lot of, um, uh, there, there are many problems in lead code that actually deals with uh, overlapping ranges. Um, as well, I mean, I'm relatively certain. So definitely practice those if you struggle with that one. Um, and I say this because, uh, partially because I'm lazy, but also because I think I solve it a, a bit differently than everyone else. I think there are a couple of, um, there are a couple of stack based methods, um, that I probably could prove, but I'm just not as fast on because it's not as, I, I just do it another way is the short answer, right? So definitely, um, practice on those and kind of figuring, uh, figure out what the invariants are and then kind of, you know, keep working through it. And that's how I would solve it if I am forced to solve it using the stack way or the um, whatever. Even though I, I was gonna say that in theory is more ideal because it, stack means that you can do it in linear time, but you still have to sort. So so it's not that, it's not actually faster, so I don't know. So that's why maybe that's why I like to do it the way I like to do it. And those of you who have been following me for a long time or maybe even not that long, but at least sufficient amount of time. Uh, you know that I like to do these with what I call uh, events uh, sweep line, right? So basically, I just put these things in a event, and then I just sweep line them up. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, I took a bit of long time here just because I had a lot of silly mistakes uh, with respect to naming variables. So you, when you see the live portion, you're going to be like, oh my, Larry, 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 because that's how I feel. But basically, the, the visualization is um, uh, is me bring, bringing up paintbrush. Hang on. And hopefully this time I actually put it on screen because last time I drew a bunch of stuff and I forgot to put it on screen. Alright, uh, so hang on, friends. Still here, but now with a fancy pen. Um, but yeah, but the idea here is that, uh, and the visualization around it is that basically you have this number line, right? And then you have these events, or uh, 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 okay, so you have these ranges, right? Um, that that kind of you want you care about, right? So you have these ranges, and then you know something like that, and you're trying to overlap them and maybe some of them don't overlap uh, I kind of messed up that a little bit but anyway the way that I think about it and you could sort it and with this visualization you could do it another way but the way that I think about it is having it as events right meaning that uh, okay now let's say we have a sweep line algorithm going from left to right and then now there are two type of events for each range you have the beginning event and the end event right and there's one here too for the two beginnings and then the idea is that just processing these in a way such that we keep track of how many ranges are in each discrete event because only in these events are, are position able to change right meaning that you know between changing colors hang on between like here to here, like nothing can change because there's no, there are no events in between. So basically, for example, now it goes from zero overlaps to one overlap to two overlap to back to one overlap 
to two overlap to one overlap to two overlap to one overlap to zero overlaps, right? Then one zero one dot uh, dot 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 say, right? So that's basically the idea. And what we care about, um, and there, and given this, I don't know if you want to call it frequency graph or what. I, I don't know the terminology off my head today. I'm really slow today. But in any case, um, you. You know, and depending on how what 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 the problem is asking, you could have different things, right? For example, if how many things overlap, you know, maybe that means having a two or more is what we care about. But for this one, we don't care about this. For this one, what we care about is um, contiguous number of segments, right? So this means everything that is between the zeros. So this means that you know this one until we see a zero. That means that all these. That means that in this entire timeline, there exists at least one segment or one range, right? And that's basically how I did it. Um, yeah, let me take it back. So yeah, so that's basically the code. So I have events, I have the beginning event and the end event. Um, I do, because this is inclusive, I take it out uh, the next one so that, basically the way to think about this, and I'm gonna be, oh, whoops. Locked my computer by accident. Uh, screensaver came on for some reason. Um, but it's thinking about how if if you have both these events at the same space, how do you want to resolve it? And that's basically how I come up with this. Though, like I said, uh, a bit of it will be experience and playing around with it. And yeah, and sorting. Yeah, now we're just sorting the event from left to right. Counts is the counts that uh, the number of, uh, what do they call it? The number of overlapping ranges and then current is just the current number of overlapping ranges so then for each event we add it to the delta delta is one for that's why i have one and negative one i didn't mention this but that's so one for adding one to uh, uh, uh the current number of overlapping ranges and minus one is obviously again to subtract one from the number of um overlapping ranges and yeah and as we said once if it goes to zero then we increase the number of them um the reason why you can keep it so simple is because you know that there's only one way to go from zero which is with delta is negative one and if current was one prior so it goes from one to zero right there's really no other um state transition or whatever you want to call it right there's no transition that's possible so you can so it makes this code look really simple but it, there's a lot of thought behind it i want to put some emphasis on that just so that because i think sometimes people see like code with like three for loops and they're like oh yeah uh this is symbol but then no 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 the visualization and the understanding is really hard sometimes and you have to and when you understand it like all these minor things about like edge cases and nuances disappear but that doesn't mean that they weren't being thought about it or i mean sometimes you could get lucky i suppose uh or you know from experience etc but in general these things um yeah like these things required thought these things just come out in that way and it looks simple because of years of practice and experience not because of anything um yeah not, not because of like luck or something or like you know it can be easy to understand but yeah um and then like we said at the end it is just two to the power of counts um in python there is a mod mod power thing if you take it in the thing so we could do it this way otherwise you could just add a for loop that just multiply to like count number of times and remember that counts is at most n so this is going to be linear time at worst no matter what uh, this is also linear um, this is linear but the sorting is dominating so it's n log n and linear time oh sorry and lock and time and linear space because of the events and that's all we have for this one uh yeah that's all i have for this one let me know what you think and you could watch me solve a live and contest now i don't know the answer to it anyway so let's go <sighs> okay focus and it even starts here Split ranges to two possible groups. Each range belongs to exactly so. Huh? 
Oh, let's mod, 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 mod this. Can mod one once. I don't even think I understand what this is asking yet. Okay. Oh, so they're overlapping and they have to be in the same group. And then it just becomes. Okay, so I mean. <clears throat> mm. Just a number of groups and then do them, right? Oh, that's. Okay. That's not that bad, but how do I. Hmm. Overlapping things, I guess just defend stuff. To the ninth, okay. Have to do this way. Da, 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 da. See, and in the same point, inclusive. So, okay, yeah. Is that what I want? Yeah, probably. It's fine. Yeah, okay. This cat is gonna one there's always at least one group. to zero zero then right and then it's just now what does that mean that means that they're that means distinct groups and the both could be both sides or just two to the counts right two and four why is this taking so long i don't have anything funky Hmm, uh, it's the... Are they having issues again? Memory limited exceeded. Oh, whoops. So I do have something funky. Whoops, see daisies. Two and two. Hmm. That's weird. So this should have two groups. So I have one group. Why? Tell me why. Dive it off by one. Because this goes to nine. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, oh whoops. If... Mm, that's also wrong though. <laughs> okay, so... Not sorted. Oh, I sorted ranges. Oh, so many stupid typos on this one for me. Okay, still wrong, but at least uh, it's good. Let me see. And the idea should be right. I'm just implementing it dumbly. So there's three groups. Why? Oh, because current at the very last one. Okay, so I don't need to start at one. I think. That's the thing. Okay. Let's do a YOLO. <sighs> hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem and this explanation and this contest. Uh, yeah, stay good, stay healthy, do good mental health. I'll see you later and take care. Bye bye.